everybody, this is Jen Springer today, and I'm going to give you a little course here on juicing made simple. You know, a lot of people think that juicing is hard, and I get asked very frequently, is juicing good for you? Is it good for your liver? What are some simple juicing recipes? What juicer should I buy? I mean, I all the time I hear these things. So I figured I'd put together a little video so that you can get the down and low basics. All right, so here's me and you're probably wondering, well, why are you qualified to talk about juicing? Well, I got a, some of those papers behind my name that say maybe I know what I'm doing some way, somehow, right? <laughs> my name is Jen Springer and I've been with a company called Young Living since 2001 and it's a health and wellness company and they have been around for a long time and that's where I started my education. And so the, that led me into going into the massage therapy field. Uh, but prior to that, I got my bachelor's degree in environmental science. And one of my biggest frustrations with being an environmental scientist was I remember specifically asking my professors when I was in school, you know, we learned about Superfund and the EPA and toxic waste management and how to protect yourself from chemical exposure if you were in the field as a professional. But I remember asking him, I said, what happens to the people that get exposed to chemicals? And he said, I don't know can't get the chemicals out of them and I said what yeah I said, you cannot get the chemicals out of people and they said no and that made me very depressed so I was very excited when I started getting into the natural health and medicine you know medicine field because I was able to learn that we can detoxify people and I'm definitely going to talk about that today when we talk about juicing so I have a certificate that says I'm an aromatherapy expert from the Pacific Institute of Aromatherapy, and I have a master's degree in holistic nutrition, which is where a lot of this information comes from about juicing and foods and vitamins and enzymes and essential fats and all that stuff you hear me ramble on about uh, on various other videos and some of my other seminars and, of course, blog posts and things like that. I've taken courses from the Certified Natural Health Professional Group. Um, I'm an instructor at a university here in Minnesota called Globe University and I have many approved courses by the Massage Therapy Board um, called the NCBTMB, the National Certification for, Massa for Body Work, uh, Therapeutic Massage. Yeah, I, <laughs> so anybody out there can ramble on what NCBTMB stands for really quick. Um, and also the North Dakota CE uh, Board as well for the North Dakota Massage Therapists. So you know, that's why I feel like, you know, I can share this with you and, and hopefully you'll you'll realize that uh, maybe I know what I'm doing a little bit. <laughs> Some days I question that myself. But first I must, you know, give you my disclaimer because I want to make sure you understand that the information I talk about is not meant to diagnose, treat, or prescribe any cure, any condition at all. It's for educational purposes only and consult your preferred healthcare practitioner when you're making decisions about your health and for you and your family. And the statements that are going to be in this particular video are that anything is mentioned in here has not been approved by the FDA. Okay, so let's move forward. All right, I'm going to give you four reasons why to juice. Well, juicing helps you absorb all the nutrients from the vegetables because it's pretty much ready to go. You drink it and it goes right into your body and the it's almost like pre-digested. Everything is bioavailable and your body could just suck it right in and assimilate those nutrients. Okay, so that's one of the reasons. Juicing also allows you to have more volume of vegetables and fruits in a very efficient manner. So, you know, depending on your body type should depend on how many fruits and vegetables you should have. But personally, I believe you cannot have too many vegetables. I do believe you can have too much fruit, especially over ripe fruit and fruit with a lot of sugar because it can create some yeast issues in your body and then your ears itch and your butt itches and then your tongue is coated white and you're bloated and you've got gas and, you know, that's just bad. You have, you have tiredness and headaches and things like that. You might cough and have a lot of mucus. So I don't advocate a lot of fruit, but I do advocate unlimited green vegetables, vegetables of color in the rainbow. I'm not talking about corn as a vegetable or potato as a vegetable. But juicing raw potatoes is actually an excellent way to get heavy metals out of your body, but it has to be a raw potato. And I don't, I've tried that 
I would do it to detox the metals, but I definitely don't like the taste. It tastes like dirt. <laughs> well, it's exactly where they grow, right? All right, so, and the other thing is you, you can add a wide variety of veggies in your diet by juicing especially if there are certain things that you don't like. Um, and also, too, you know, think of a big salad. You, it may take you, I don't know about you guys, but it takes me like an hour to eat a salad. But if I run that thing through the juicer, I can drink it. And, and there's a specific way you want to drink your your juice so that you digest it okay I'm going to talk about that later but you can you know if there's something that you don't really prefer like say spinach or you don't really like beets or something like that you can put them in your juices and still get them but not have to quote deal with the taste if you know what I'm saying no the fourth reason this is my favorite reason in the entire world about um, juicing and why it's good for you is because juicing is one of my favorite best all-time mega favorite if I can if I can uh, how do you want to say it if I can stress this the, in the biggest way possible the the vegetables are the best detoxifiers of the body and so are some of the fruits and so anything with vibrant beautiful color deep greens reds oranges you know things of really dark reds like beets you know, anything of that nature is going to help detoxify your body. And really, what does that mean? Because people think, well, I'm not toxic. You know, I don't live near a waste dump and I don't work in a chemical factory. Well, if you breathe the air and you eat regular foods and your body is alive, you have toxins. You know, even outside of the chemical toxins, you have metabolic toxins, which are the leftover garbage that your body has when you are just performing metabolic processes, such as taking food and making it, you know, from when it goes into your mouth, using it in your body, and then the waste product that leaves your body. You know, that's also a detoxification pathway. So it's very important to have nutrients that your body can assimilate and take in in order for your body to garbage, you know, out, if you know what I'm saying, whether it's from the air you breathe or the leftover hamburger from yesterday. You need B vitamins, you need folic acid, you need glutathione, which is something that your liver um, may or may not be producing correctly. Um, you have antioxidants, some of the herbs that you could be using like milk thistle and when we talk about beets as well as one of my favorite liver detoxifiers, so is carrot seed and so is celery, things like that. Uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, your carotenoids, um, which is your quote A group, um, your carotenoids are the, the orange spectrum, if you know what I'm saying. Carrots, carotenoids, got it? Um, and then there's other nutrients your body needs for phase two detoxification. Amino acids, which if you're not digesting protein, you're not breaking things down. And that's why I'm a big advocate of enzymes and the, uh, the enzymes that come through in juicing because the food is still alive is very beneficial. Um, I also encourage people to also supplement some enzymes, but that's a whole different seminar. <laughs> and then your body also has to sulfurate, um, get the chemicals out of your body um, using sulfur-based, they call it sulfonation, um, that gets chemicals out with the sulfur that found in your cruciferous vegetables, your garlic, your onions, you know, that really pungent you smell you get from those things. I mean, think about when you cook broccoli, you wonder if somebody farted or is it broccoli, right? <laughs> so your body needs these things to get these, you know, toxins from fat soluble to water soluble. Fat soluble is where your your cells are holding on to these toxins, and to get them out, they need to go out with the water, hence your urine or your bowel movement, right? So when your body can do this correctly in phase one, phase two, or step one, step two, the products become water soluble, then they can go out through the exits, if you know what I'm saying. And things that will impede your you know detoxification pathways are parasites, pollution, insecticides, even like even um, fertilizers <clears throat> that go in your lawn, um, pesticides, things you spray in your bushes, things that are on your foods, food additives, drugs, alcohol. But I find in my practice the number one issue with the detoxification pathway is people are not getting the right nutrients in their body and if they are they can't break them down. So it's impaired digestion or eating the wrong things. 
So that's where I feel. So that's, I know it's a long slide there, and I hope you're still with me here. Okay, so I know these are graphic, um, but I want to show you what happens when the liver isn't right. Um, look at the top left picture. That's a cystic liver, polycystic liver. Do you know you see those men and women whose bellies stick out like five feet? You know, and they look like they're going to pop. They look like they're pregnant. Well, it's because their liver is enlarged, and it's probably due to those cysts. I mean, that's just insane. There's a good liver there on the bottom, and then that other liver. Can you imagine what that person's stomach looked like? If you search polycystic liver on the Internet, let me prepare you. You will see things that you didn't know were possible inside of people's bodies. Okay, if you go to the top right, you see a fatty liver on the top, you know, that real pale looking color. And that is attributed not to too much fat. You know, according to the holistic medical community, we see a fatty liver when people are eating too much sugar and refined carbohydrates. So don't get, that'll be another whole soapbox. And then you've got on the lower right a normal liver, um, which is what we all should have. If you notice, too, the other liver is also enlarged. And then the bottom right, which is the most famous liver disease, is cirrhosis due to you know drugs or alcohol. And it could be even legal drugs. It could be over-the-counter drugs. It could be something like Tylenol. So this is what happens when the liver gets really scarred and full of um, tissue that is just hard and can't it can't process anymore. So your liver gets the garbage out. Remember that phase one, phase two detox I just talked about. Your liver makes hormones, actually converts hormones. We call it conjugation. Uh, makes fuel for your muscles through the process of um, gluconeogenesis. <laughs> I know I'm trying to throw in some smart terms so I, I sound better. Um, and then it stores nutrients, stores a lot of your vitamins. Um, very, very important. If your liver is compromised, you might be having some deficiencies because your body just can't store it. And then your liver also breaks down nutrients. And my favorite term for the liver is think of it as the chemist. Your liver is the chemist of your body. It's think of the lab coat and the little um, the little beakers and the test tubes and pouring and changing and making new things. That is your liver. Okay, it's what your liver does. Um, I also want to talk about your kidney as far as detoxing. Uh, besides getting rid of the liquid garbage, your kidneys also are responsible for releasing a couple hormones that some of you might find are an issue for you. <laughs> One is um, you've got your kidneys release a hormone called erythro. Oh my gosh, I should have said that six times. Erythropoietin. <laughs> That's fun. Try to say that twelve times, especially if you've got something in your mouth, which stimulates bone marrow and tells your um, body to make red blood cells. So people that may be anemic could have an issue with this hormone. But the second and third one are the ones I really want to focus on. The hormone renin regulates blood pressure. Now, how many people do you know, or maybe yourself, that has a problem with blood pressure? People always think that blood pressure is a heart problem. The blood pressure is not a heart problem. It's a kidney and adrenal issue. And so working on your kidneys can help blood pressure. So it's really, you know, if your heart has a hard time pumping because the blood pressure is too high, your heart gets too big and enlarged. And then the last thing there, um, the calcic triol is a form of vitamin D. It's the active form of it. Vitamin D is um, the vitamin that everybody talks about nowadays for calcium and anti-depression and you know all these wonderful feeling good things but if you don't have the hormone from your kidneys you're gonna have low vitamin D levels even if you supplement so it's very important um, very important hormone to have in your body because these are hot buzzwords right now blood pressure vitamin D are you getting omegas you know I'm not even gonna talk about omega fats today but you know vitamin D levels everybody's getting their vitamin D level well what does that mean right um, well a few things are you know, you know you, your kidneys could be creating a problem um, because if you don't have enough of the hormone the calcitriol you may not be able to store it period so there's two t causes of kidney disease. One is diabetes and high blood pressure. They're common causes. I mean, of course, there are other causes. This can be prevented. And you got to help your kidneys work right. You know, eating foods that will help support them and clean them, especially juicing. And then eliminating those nasty habits such as smoking, drinking alcohol, processed foods, you know, not drinking enough water. Please, everybody, drink enough water so that when you pee, it's light yellow or clear. That's how you know you're drinking enough water. And if your pee stinks or it's cloudy or it's orange, 
yeah, you got some issues. You might want to see your doctor, okay? All right, and this is unbelievable. When I saw this picture, I was like, is this from a cow? <laughs> you know, this is not. This is from a human. And I found this on a chat group. And this guy, um, Dedere, he I couldn't find his credentials to tell you who he was. But this guy's father had polycystic kidneys, which were removed. They weighed 16 to 18 pounds combined. They were the second largest set of kidneys that was ever seen by the University of Pennsylvania, and they still have them for teaching purposes. Can you only imagine, I can't even imagine what that person felt like, and I can't imagine what that person looked like. You know, you see those people with their bellies, they look like swollen ticks. Well, here you go. That's that's what's going on. Either their liver or their kidneys or both look like that. That had to have been incredibly painful. <gasps> oh. Anyways, okay, let's get into the other stuff now that I'm done grossing you out. So let's talk about juicing 101. First thing, must have pesticide-free vegetables. Choose organic whenever possible. And also use some of those veggie cleaners. Um, I love, I didn't realize how important those things were till recently. I was in a um, chiropractor's office and he showed us, he was doing a demo and he showed us how to um, clean the veggies using the, like just the vegetable spray you get at the store. And let me tell you, that thing lasts a long time, that spray bottle. But all this dirt and grime and color came off. And I remember doing my tomatoes when I first bought this cleaner and I soaked the tomatoes and the water was yellow. And these were supposedly natural, non-chemicalized tomatoes. And so please wash your veggies with a veggie wash um, and choose organic whenever possible. But I know for some of you that might be limited budget. So please wash them with the, the veggie wash because it's made to get the, the wax off and the chemicals off. Below are some vegetables that are the highest uh, loaded with pesticides according to the Environmental Working Group. And if you're into environmental stuff, Environmental Working Group's website is ewg.org and it's a fast fascinating and fantastic group of people non for profit that helps educate you know the public about what's going on with the chemicals in the world but anyways if possible um, please get these organic if not grow them or find them from a local farmer and if you do have to buy them commercial please 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 <laughs> use the veggie wash um, if you can see in one of my other videos I actually go through our garden and you can see what we're growing so that we can have our own things to juice and and uh, you know as best we can during the growing time of the year so celery spinach kale collard greens lettuce carrots and cucumbers are some of the highest in the, in the pesticides so there you go. All right, so second thing here is A, have clean food. B, get ready to juice. Um, please note that the order listed is not intended for those <laughs> that are new to juicing um, so you have a pleasant experience, you know, because I don't want you jumping in and doing mustard greens tomorrow uh, because you might hate me forever and you won't ever juice again and that juicer will get, like, rusty or, you know, who knows what will happen. Spiders are living it. So if you're new, um, what is something that I found a trick, one of my favorite tricks to, for juicing is to use a quarter to a half a lemon, depending on how much juice you make, can make the, um, the juice a little bit more smooth and it can almost like sweeten it up. I know it's an acid of a lemon or a lime. I love limes as well. But though that can transform your juice and really mellow the flavor of the juice. Um, also... Remember, it'd be far better to use lemon and limes than carrots, beets, or apples, which have high fructose levels. Um, like I said, I'm not a big advocate of a lot of, um, I don't want to say, the root vegetables and a lot of fruits. If you're going to use apples, use Granny Smith and use them in moderation. If you're going to do a beet, do a half a beet. You know, I have people that tell me, oh, I drink juice. I do a pound of carrots a day and I throw in some apples and I throw in some pears and, and I my ears start to itch just even talking to these people. Um, there's a time and a place for that in a short dose and if you're you know underneath the guidance of a nutritional professional, yes, you can definitely do that for targeting certain things. But for the average everyday juicing, if you're just pile driving carrots and apples, you're not going to be getting the benefits of what juicing is really about. Um, second thing here, or step one, um, if you're new to juicing, I recommend starting out with these vegetables. Celery, fennel, which I love and really supports your digestion, and cucumbers. Cucumbers are, these are, um, these are 
vegetables that will help pull out like hardened mucus out of your body will soothe your digestion will also alkalize your body and get just you know so much inflammation out that's really what i'm talking about here these aren't as nutrient dense as the dark green veggies but once you get used to the ones above you can start adding more nutrient dense but maybe not as palatable like i said collard greens and things like that i love radishes and stuff like that you can add those to your juice but i love making a base of celery um, fennel which is a little more money but it a little fennel goes a long way because it's got that really beautiful um anise or flavor and it doesn't taste like licorice so don't even go there guys don't even start complaining um and then uh cucumbers a lot of water in a cucumber and it's very cooling to the body very anti-inflammatory so these are a great base so first start out with those and then when you're feeling sassy <laughs> or if you're already a health nut and you are you know um used to eating some of the the more stronger greens Add in red leaf lettuce, green leaf lettuce, romaine lettuce, endive, escarole, spinach, collard greens, right? Add those things in and make sure that um, you, when you buy them, buy the richest in color and also the ones that are the freshest. Don't buy wilted lettuce because, trust me, they don't juice. <laughs> Your juicer will scream at you and get clogged and then you might need to buy a new one. Ask me how I know. That burning smell coming out of your juicer is bad. I'm just going to warn you. Um, step three, after you've gotten kind of used to those, then you can add some really fun things like cabbage, Chinese cabbage, which is Napa cabbage, or bok choy. Now, these aren't real strong, especially the bok choy and the Napa cabbage, but they are fantastic for your intestines, like really, really good for your digestive tract. And, of course, you hear, you know, the cruciferous vegetables, you know, anything in the cabbage family is great for detoxification. Remember the picture I showed you a while ago of the liver? And then it's also fantastic for the C word <laughs> begins with C, ends with R, and there's an A and C E in the middle, right? Um, you hear about that all the time. And then, too, people are concerned these days, and I don't blame them, about having chemicals in their body that disrupt their hormones called xenoestrogens. Well, those are scrubbed out with the cruciferous vegetables. So, there you go. All right, so step four, when you're, you know, up to that level, you can also add some herbs that are fantastic. Some common ones are parsley, cilantro. You can do wheatgrass. Um, you know, you can get a little more frisky with those herbs. But remember, especially when you get into more of the culinary herbs like sage and basil, a little goes a really long way because <laughs> you you might be like, oh, you might kill your juice with the fragrance or the the, the taste. But I will tell you that parsley is fantastic for your kidneys, like super amazingly awesome to getting all that, you know, yucky out of your kidneys. <laughs> and cilantro has been known for helping detoxify heavy metals, especially in the brain. Um, you got to be cautious with cilantro as you may not be able to tolerate it well. If you're new to juicing, hold off on the cilantro because it, it may be potent and it really detoxifies strongly. I eat a ton of cilantro and I juice it. I have no problems with it. But if you're brand new, don't go out and buy cilantro and cabbage and kale and start juicing tomorrow. You will be writing bad comments on the wall of my uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> and I don't blame you. I've done that once. Call it uh, uh, colon blow, right? And then the last step is once you're feeling really groovy, you can get to these particular items they're very bitter but the bitters anything bitter herbs or foods you know veggies stimulate digestion in a fabulous way so collard greens kale dandelions mustard greens they really support digestion they really support the liver and they are fantastic for you but remember don't go juice a whole thing of dandelion greens Oof, you your bowels may be a little excited and they're going to be so bitter you probably won't even be able to drink it so use those in moderation don't get the buy one get 12 free sale you'll they'll probably go bad before you even use them so start out with one or two stocks when you're adding them in and then you know go to where you feel comfortable and where it's good okay so all right, so let's make you do, you know some tips here to make your juice taste really yummy um, so if you'd like to make them taste 
better. Not that they don't taste good, but when you're new, they taste different. It's like having raw salad in a glass. And so there's some tricks that I love to do that will um, help my juice taste really delicious, especially when you're introducing it to other family members that think you're totally nuts. Um, lemons and limes, I've already talked about those. Leave as much as the white rind on as possible. I juice with my rinds when I do lemons and limes or grapefruits or anything like that because of all the wonderful um, uh, photochemicals that are in those, uh, the rinds in the, in the white part. But please get organic if you're going to juice the rinds because, you know, there's a lot of wax and dye and pesticides in the normal conventional citrus fruits. Um, cranberries are also great. Um, cranberries are really high in antioxidants. They're fantastic for your kidneys. They're fantastic for your bladder, especially if you've got issues of, you know, that area in your body where you're getting reoccurring infections, you might really want to throw in some cranberries. But remember, they're going to be tart, so you might add some lemon, and then I'm going to talk about honey in a minute. And then fresh ginger, if you can tolerate it. Um, a little bit goes a long way. It gives a little kick to your juice. Of course, is it um, soothes your digestive tract and helps with your cardiovascular system, your um, cholesterol levels, and things like that. It is delicious, you know, especially if you got a super green, you know, you got a lot of greens in there, lettuce and some kale and some mustard greens. You add in some ginger and it really makes it delicious. So those are some of my cheaters that you can add in to really make them yummy. Now, one thing is um, drink your veggies right away or store it very carefully for a short period of time. Juicing is not meant for something. Yeah, you can go to the grocery store and get juice that will last in your refrigerator for six months, but it's not alive anymore. It's been cooked to death, and it's basically sugar water, um, even though they're charging you $5 for a pint of it. So please use your juice right away. Make enough to maybe drink for the day and then be done. Preferably like half the day because it loses the nutrient value so incredibly fast. So juicing is time consuming. It just is. But if you get a juicer that's easy to clean and I throw mine in the dishwasher, it's really fine. Okay. So you can store it up to 24 hours with only a little bit of nutritional decline. But, um, please drink it as fast as possible. And I'm gonna talk about doing a little preservative right here. So here's how you store it. Put it in a glass container. Please make it glass, it's gotta be glass. Um, the, don't, I, ugh, I'm just even thinking about those plastic ones. Uh, if you notice the plastic ones get stained, well, that's because your juice got absorbed into the plastic. Don't you think the reverse happens? Don't you think the plastic gets into your juice? So please store it in glass tighten the lid will help the juice by not oxidizing okay if you've got one of those fancy wine things that pulls the air out you can do that too because it'll um, uh, it'll help that not oxidize as fast um, you can also use purchase a food like vacuum saver pump like I said put the juice in a ball jar and then suck out the air that helps you know keep it if you're gonna do it um, put it immediately in the fridge and consume it within at least you know no later than 24 hours it at, you'll notice the taste though I can't even wait 12 hours I mean I try to drink it within a few hours because I the taste to me within even a couple hours is gross yeah, I can taste it breaking down and losing its value most people juice in the morning but if that doesn't work out for you very well choose it to um, uh, whatever meal works best for your lifestyle, you know, and, and do the juice with that. Or do the juice in the middle of a day as a snack, or you might even do it as your dessert before bed. Um, juicing before bed is a great idea because it will help pull, you know, all that inflammation and um, acid stuff that you've got in your body from the day, either from either working out or being active or just your metabolic processes of digestion. And then clean your juicer properly. If you notice, I am not showing a video of my own juicer because I can't get the thing clean. <laughs> it looks really crazy with like spatters all over it. But it, you know, juicing can take, the hardest part about juicing is the cleaning of the juicer. So it can take a little bit to do that. One of the tricks that I use is um, a toothbrush to clean the metal grater, you know, if you've got a centrifugal type of uh, juicer, which I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That is the only thing that I clean by hand. I throw the rest of it in the dishwasher. 
and that's easy because I don't want that little centrifugal grater that's in there I don't want it to get dull so I don't put it in the dishwasher so then it'll just take you a couple minutes to to clean it out so whatever you do clean it immediately to help that uh, juice or not have any remnants in there to get food poisoning in the future or to have mold. Yeah, nothing more disgusting than a beautiful glass of juice that tastes like mold. <laughs> so to feel um, really good and to have more satiety and cleansing power, there's some secrets that I add into my juice. One is ground flax seeds or ground chia seeds love those for my juice because for me I've dealt with a lot of sugar blood sugar challenges and even juiced green vegetables can give me a little bit of a blood sugar swing so I need to anchor down what I call that anchoring down the um, the the blood sugar <laughs> with fats and fiber and good fats and good fiber like chia seeds and flax seeds I Personally, chia is my favorite, and I'll rotate in every now and then flax. You get the flax um, and chia power of soothing the digestive tracts. Your di digestive tract, you don't have multiple tracts. You got one big long tube in there. To, to soothe the digestive tract um, helps you hold water better in your body because they absorb a lot of water. They're gentle scrubbers. They help you feel full. They have nutrient value. I mean, I'm really a big fan of both of these, but I'm really loving chia seeds, to be honest. And I do grind them. They say you don't have to, but I do grind them just because my digestive system, I want to give it a little more help. Um, now, here's my preservative for the juices. Now, when you buy juice from the store, it's dead and it's been cooked. And even the stuff like the naked juice and the farm one they I don't know what is it bottle something farm I don't know what it is um, I don't bolt house farms I don't buy those things but they they say they're they're flash pasteurized and stuff like that well fine the the preservative that I like to use if I'm going to do you know a juice and have it for about 12 hours is raw honey just a teaspoon of raw honey and there will help preserve it you can also use essential oils to preserve it I'm going to talk a little bit about that more in the next slide but you can spiff up, spiff up the flavor and you can also preserve the juice using essential oils of lemon, lime, ginger, spearmint, frankincense. Um, these are some of my favorites. There's some blends like Citrus Fresh or Sleek. Um, another oil called Akatea. You know, if you're feeling really, you know, on the edge, you can use some clove oil. <laughs> a little bit goes a long way with that. You can also enhance the flavor of your juice with Stevia. I prefer the herb itself if you can grow that in your little greenhouse or outside or you can buy an extract of course but make sure your extract if you really want the nutritional value of stevia make sure it's the brown extract and not the clear stuff you get at the store with it you know tastes like root beer okay um, you could add in basil you can add mint rosemary any of these types of herbs can really be fantastic adding it into your juice and then like I said for longer satiety you can add in chia or flax seeds but you can also blend in nut butters coconut oil which is one of my ninja tricks I love coconut oil it's antifungal supports the metabolism um, there's a lot of things that go very um, beneficial with coconut oil yes heavy cream organic heavy cream for some people that don't have a problem with dairy that's another way to make a creamy smoothie type of uh, juice avocados are another way to thicken it up and to give you some good fats and more satiety yogurt and kefir kefir is similar to yogurt different bacterial strains it's a little more runny um, i love kefir in my juices as well um, i prefer kefir especially like a and yogurt i, I prefer a goat yogurt or um, of course in a perfect world if i could find goat kefir all the time I can't though but I do like Helios um, kefir is my preferred commercial um, kefir and of course guys now listen listen get your pen ready do not buy write this down do not buy kefirs and yogurts that are already full of nasty sugar <laughs> so it's organic I know it's organic it's the got cane juice yeah it's got cane juice it's still bad okay so don't do it and also you have to remember the fruits that they're putting in there are not raw they're cooking the fruits before they put them in so the blueberries the strawberries the the peach all that is cooked before it goes in so it's not raw either so buy the yogurt in the kefir plain add in fresh strawberries fresh peaches fresh blueberries 
okay? And if you want to sweeten it, if you can't stand it the way it is, which I love that, that tanginess, add in a little honey, preferably not a lot, or add in my favorite, add in stevia, um, the stevia extract. Um, you can also add in protein powders to your juicing so that it can give you more protein, especially if you're gonna do a cleanse. Um, if you're gonna be cleansing, two protein powders are my preferred. One is a rice protein uh, or um, a really high quality whey protein. Whey helps the liver detoxify and cleanse itself. So, um, so it, it's a supporting agent to the liver is whey. All right, so let me give you my commercial on essential oils because I love them and I'm very passionate about aromatherapy and essential oils. And the courses that I teach for the massage boards are 50% based off of uh, essential oils. I do many courses on this topic. So I just, I have to educate everybody I can about them because I think they're amazing. So besides tasting good, essential oils, what essential oils are, they are the, um, the, lifeblood of the plant. They can either come from the rind, like the citrus, the orange, the tangerine, the lemon, the lime. They can also come from the leaf, like peppermint and basil and rosemary. They can also come from the root, like if you ever heard of valerian root, okay, that's exactly what um, where that comes from. They can also come from the resin, like frankincense and myrrh. So I'm just giving you some examples. They can come from the seed, like my favorite, celery seed and my all-time favorite, coriander seed <laughs> for blood sugar balancing. I love coriander seed. So anyways, whew, you can tell I get so excited about this. But why do I love essential oils? This is 10 reasons and I had to stop at 10 because <laughs> I've got like 100. But they fight overgrowth of yeast, candida, and parasites. So these are the friends in low places that you don't want to have. Get them out. Peppermint is anti- uh, parasitic you know it gets rid of those little friends you don't want also supportive of your gallbladder um, it, it's just one of those things that you don't want to think about but it happens and I'm just telling you guys you probably have friends and, and I don't want all my friends either so let's just use some oils to get them out um, essential oils not and I can't these are kind of blanket statements but there are certain oils that do these jobs better than others um, especially the citrus oils they support cleansing of your lymphatic system which is like your your water system it's like your sewage um, helps get that cleaned up um, essential oils will help digest chemicals that are stored in the tissues so will help liberate fat soluble toxins so that it can get captured and let go out with the phase one and phase two detoxification process essential oils can help boost your immune system most of them are antiviral and antibacterial do you know what chemo prevention means? <laughs> there are over 50 peer-reviewed research studies that talk about how the chemical component delimonene in the citrus oils prevents and is a treatment for tumors and cancer. Um, if you want that research, you can email me. I can give it to you. I just didn't want to list it all here because it would take too much room up on the slide. But you can even go to pubmed.gov, put in essential oils and cancer. You will find a lot. D-limonene, cancer, put it into pubmed.gov. You will find a lot of stuff. Um, essential oils are mega cell protect protectors. Um, for example, the antioxidant scale called the or called the ORAC scale. Um, clove oil is 1.8 million on that scale. It's like the highest substance ever found per 100 grams of, uh, of substance. So little goes a long, 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 long way. Essential oils are anti-inflammatory because inflammation is the source of all dis-ease. Uh, many essential oils will help you balance your blood sugar and help resensitize your insulin receptor sites. So if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic or having issues of that nature, <laughs> like myself, um, yes, they help you get heal up those receptor sites. Especially Akatea oil is one of my favorites for doing that. And I'm gonna, I don't, I don't talk much about Akatea in here, but you can, you know, talk to me privately about that. Send me a note, and I can talk to you about Akatea if you get some blood sugar issues. Some essential oils help boost the metabolism. As you see there, there's a picture of Citrus Fresh. Citrus Fresh um, helps boost the metabolism because of the spearmint oil in there and uh, the. Um, Oil of grapefruit is also known for lipolysis, which means the digestion of fat. And, you know, most of us have some fat that we don't want to have around anyways. <laughs> and then lastly, um, the essential oils help 
the body absorb all the other nutrients so you need less supplements and also the supplements will work better and so will absorbing your juice so it makes sense to put the oils in the juice right so they taste good and they do all these other fun things and make you feel better and healthy and think straight and have energy and all that other jazz all right so let's talk about juicers okay this is where the confusion really sets in for most people if you are brand new please don't go get a three four hundred dollar juicer if you're super new get a cheapie and I know there's experts out on the internet that say don't get to cheapy because it does this to your juice and does that to your juice and whatever. No, cut the crap. They're trying to sell you an expensive juicer. Go with one under 100 bucks. Get a Hamilton Beach Juice Man wearing $50 range. Go with that. You can throw most of the components in your dishwasher. The reason is is because a lot of people will start thinking they want to juice and they don't wind up juicing and then you've got a $400 juicer sitting in your cabinet and you're pissed off because you bought that thing and you're just wondering what the heck and you're gonna put it on eBay to get rid of it <laughs> right so don't do that buy a cheapie burn it up you know use it for a year you'll probably smoke the motor but if you're gonna smoke the motor in a year you know you're using it right so get a cheapie start with that they're usually centrifugal juicers, which means you put the, see that little top little, like that looks like a chimney? You open that up, you put the veggies and the fruits in there, and you turn it on, and out comes the spout, comes the juice, and the little spinny thing inside, the centrifuge, with the, the mesh, the metal mesh in there, which I was talking about, I cleaned with the toothbrush, will spit the, the solid matter out the backside. Now, people often wonder, what do I do with that, the extra, the pulp? Well, there's a lot of recipes on the internet that you can find that you can make crackers, you can make breads, you can make, um, I've made granola out of them, putting in nuts and seeds and stuff like that, um, but preferably crackers. You know, you can make flax crackers and you can use the pulp for the flax crackers. You can also compost some of it. Um, very often I will give the pulp to my horses. Make sure you're not giving your animals any toxic pulp, but just, you know, you can do a lot of things with it especially if you make your own breads you can put the pulp in the breads so there's a lot of things to do with the pulp but I'm not going there today because it's a different seminar but okay middle of the road juicers here's this another centrifugal juicer which is a really good one and you most of you probably seen the commercial with Jack LaLanne um, he was a big advocate of health and juicing and you know he looked amazing even till you know he transitioned Jack LaLanne juicer runs about 100 to 150 bucks excellent juicer it's um, if you're in the middle of the road, you're like, yeah, I don't want to spend four or five hundred, but I'm pretty serious, and I've you know I've already burned through the other juicer. You might go with this kind of juicer. And then there's a super mega Cadillac juicer that is like the Omega 3000, and there are other other ones out there like this. This has got like a gear system. It's not a centrifugal one where you put in the 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 fruit or vegetable and it spins and like you know spits juice out one way and spits the fiber out the other way. This one, you put the stuff in the cup on the top, and it goes through a grinder that got gears in there, and then out the front comes, you know, comes your stuff, you know, and and that's how you juice with one of these. So, more expensive, heavy duty. Yes, you can also make. I know a lot of these. You can make sausage. You can grind and make flours. You know, you can do a lot of things with these. Wheatgrass. If you're gonna do wheatgrass and you're gonna be doing a lot of cilantro and those herbs, you're probably gonna get want to get one of these just because it's you know going to be more high power and those gears really squeeze the juice out of the you know the finer things such as wheatgrass which is fantastic for you by the way okay and then there's a Vitamix you know going the opposite way um, I have one of these it took me a long time to get one I saved for many years and I really love my Vitamix but you don't have the pulp you put in your veggies and your fruits and your herbs and you put it in there and you put in some water and then you zzz, you you buzz it up or you could put raw almond milk or whatever you want to put in there you buzz it up and then you have the juice with the pulp intact so there's a definite pro to that please don't let it run too long or you'll have hot soup it's just part of what the Vitamix does but these range from 350 to 500 you can buy rebuilt reconditioned Vitamixes but it's still gonna cost you a lot of money I'm just saying but they are workhorses they will last a long time there are other ones out on the market that are like a Vitamix I'm just talking about a Vitamix because I own one but there are other ones out there that people think are just as good but I just wanted to go with the original so I stayed with the Vitamix because they've been doing it forever <laughs> that's why I chose a Vitamix it's it's huge though look at that motor I mean the bottom is a motor you could 
puree just about anything in there. All right, so let's talk about, I'm going to give you just a couple recipes just to get started, but there are tons of recipes. Remember, please keep down the sugar level. Do not go juicing all the fruits and think you're doing a good thing. And then, like I said, your butt will itch, your eyes will itch, your ears will itch, your skin will itch. No, I'm just kidding. No, not always kidding. But so this is a recipe that is a beet strawberry cranberry smoothie. Um, three quarters of a cup of 100% unsweetened, unsweetened cranberry juice, not ocean spray blueberry mix. We're talking like Knudsen or one of those cranberry juices that either you A, made yourself or B, the ones that you get that like make your face pucker. Yes, I'm telling you, this is what you want to do. You don't want to get the crappy stuff. Get the good stuff in the organic food section and that's what you use. Um, a quarter cup of cranberries, fresh or frozen, preferably fresh, but not they're not available all, all year long. One small beet. It says steamed for this recipe, but let me tell you what, I prefer raw beets, even when I regularly eat them. So please do a raw beet here. Um, the recipe I, I found was, um, you know, steamed, but I prefer raw. Um, one third a cup of frozen strawberries and a two teaspoons of honey or another sweetener to taste. Um, this is going to be a really good one for your kidneys and your bladder. Okay, plus the strawberries are fantastic and make it really taste good or your face would be puckered. Um, you may need less than um, two teaspoons of honey or you may need, um, or you can switch over to stevia or something like that. And then you two thirds of a cup of ice cubes and you put in the blender and zip zip and that's what you got. If you wanna add orange oil or sleek essence, this will help your lymphatic support, okay? So another recipe and you're probably going, ew, is <laughs> red cabbage. Cabbage, as you saw before, helps with anything with the digestive tract. Um, it's got all those wonderful cancer preventative chemicals in there. Um, it's just one of those amazing foods that you should be eating. So ingredients are a couple handfuls of cut red cabbage, or you can also use a half of a small cabbage, two celery sticks, one cucumber. If it's waxed, please peel it, um, and one apple without seeds preferably Granny Smith. Remember when I said go with Granny Smith because we don't want to create a yeast bloom in your body then you'll blow up like bread waiting to go in the oven. One apple, no, without, you know what, I, the seeds are here and there. Sometimes I'll just put it through and if you can pick the seeds out, fine, but don't do the seeds all the time or a lot of time because I know the seeds got some funky stuff in there you don't want to eat. So juice this. Um, you know, if you want to add a little fun to it, you could add a little bit of lemon that would really mellow this out, or even lemon oil. That would be fantastic with this one. Help the liver. Um, ingredients for a ginger cucumber juice. Um, eight large cucumbers, two cups of water, one piece of fresh root ginger, and ice cubes, <laughs> half a tray. Um, if you want to switch out um, the ginger, fresh ginger root for ginger oil, add one drop. Or you can also use spearmint. Spearmint is great with cucumbers and it's great with the greens. Um, this would be a great alkalizing and fantastic um, detoxifier for the body. Get some good chlorophyll in there. Get the acid out, the inflammation out of your body. That's what this juice would do. It would be a very cooling effect, especially if you have high blood pressure, you have arthritis, um, your body's stiff, you're not real flexible. This would be a really good juice for that purpose. So you got to be creative. You got to come up with your own. Once you've done the basics of juicing, you will be able to figure out what goes together, what doesn't. Just please remember, get the organic stuff when you can and don't be drinking gallons of carrot juice and beet juice because it in and uh, you know apple juice because you're not going to be doing yourself a favor with the yeast. So if you love learning and want to know more, you can find me at jenspringer.com. I've got articles and videos and audios and all kinds of goodies there. You can keep yourself busy. And the link for that is below in the description here of this video. And so just go down there and you can click on that. That'll take you to my site. And then you can see everything and learn more. And you can ask me questions. Send me an email through there through contact gen tab. And then, of course, share this book. Share this book. <laughs> share this Facebook. That's what I meant to say. Please share this video on Facebook with other people that you know because people are wondering about juicing. They look at the juicers, they, they've seen the Dr. Oz talk about it, they've seen it on TV, there's a lot of people that are you know, going on about juice cleansing, juice fasting, adding juice to your diet, so please share with them, especially if they have health challenges, and don't, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, um, there's a link below that looks like that button, click on that, subscribe to this channel so that you get more videos that come in the future about health and feeling great and all those other things, so don't forget to subscribe, um, this is Jen, thanks for watching and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.